Yo, yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy, Fro Thizzle. And today, I'm going to be talking about the 1980 flick, Friday the 13th, the OG. So ain't nothing to it, but to do it. I can understand that this movie is considered a big classic and one of the blueprints of its time. But I'm not the biggest fan of it. And I feel like I share the same sentiment with a lot of fellow movie nerds. And that being that I love a handful of the sequels more than the first. But there's three main things that I genuinely appreciate and enjoy here. And that's Betsy Palmer, Kevin Bacon's death scene, and Walt Gorney as Crazy Ralph. From what I understand, Betsy Palmer didn't believe much in the production of this film, and she even, in her words, considered the script to be a piece of dreck, and she mainly took the role to pay for a new car. Near the final years of her life, she did grow to appreciate the success that the movie had made, but while on set, she had no hope in this movie at all. Having said that, I do think her performance is very strong. I do find her very unnerving. And she is being quite over the top with her facial expressions and, and the childlike tone of her voice. Kill her, mommy. Kill her. It's definitely really goofy. But I highly enjoy Betsy's role in this movie, and I do think it would have been worse without her performance. In my opinion, I do like Adrian King as Alice, our leading lady, but I do find her to be a bit forgettable at the same time. I do respect Adrian King for being one of the first scream queens, if you will. I do like our leading lady in part two a bit more, especially with how she psychs out Jason by pretending to be his mother in the finale. I do feel bad for Jason, the kid that drowned in Camp Crystal Lake while the counselors were out having a fun, naughty time. It is nice to see Kevin Bacon in a very early role, and his death scene is 100% the standout. Mrs. Voorhees grabs a poker stick, Kevin Bacon's lying on a bed, and she jams the poker stick from the bottom of the bed, it goes through his throat and pops out from the front. Random side note, if you watch the uncut version on YouTube, there's a the shot lingers more, there's a bit more blood spewing out of his neck. Now this death is brutal, a little bit more in the uncut, but I feel like they should have kept the uncut version of this death scene. It's not as bad when you compare it to some R-rated films that were released around the same time. Especially now, it's a bit tame compared to all the blood and gore that a lot of us are used to seeing in modern films. So it does irk me a little bit that they couldn't just go all out and show the complete shot. Funny enough, there are a handful of people that still think Jason is the killer in this OG flick in the first one. And they forget that Mrs. Voorhees is the one that bred Jason. One thing I find funny with every viewing is that I can tell the killer is a man in most of the shots. For example, the special effect assistant in the movie, Tasso Savrakis, is the one that slits Annie's throat in the beginning of the film. We're supposed to believe Mrs. Voorhees is the one killing off all the counselors, but it's very laughable to me because the shots of the manly hands are distracting and noticeable. This small time film, which had a budget of about $500,000, went on to make 59 million bucks worldwide, which was a pretty big success at the time. And of course, this led to the sequels that we know today. And ironically, the screenwriter here, Victor Miller, despises the idea of making Jason the villain in the sequels. But I have to disagree with them because that's where the actual fun in the franchise kicks in for me, when Jason pops up. Another fun fact, Friday the 13th took a lot of inspiration from John Carpenter's Halloween, mainly how John structured his film. And that's pretty cool and interesting to me. This movie only came out about a year or two after Halloween, and both went on to become highly successful franchises. Overall, the original Friday the 13th doesn't have much replay value for me, but I do recommend for you guys to at least watch it once in your life. Cross it off the watch list. Just know that if you're looking for blood and gore, which your slasher kills, they don't amp up until the sequels come into play. I'm going to give the 1980 film, the original, Friday the 13th, a light 6 out of 10. And that's it, y'all. What do you think about this film? 
the one that started it all for the Jason franchise. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Is it your cup of tea? Do you not rock with it? Do you think it's a bit overrated? Do you think I'm being a little bit too hard on the film? Comment below. Let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, between time, I'm on to the next review. Frotober continues on. Ha ha ha.